Okay, good. Thank okay. Everybody who's with us before. Okay, I went a little bit long on the first part. We were going over the floor, floor and then we're, I think we're close to finishing the bars. Um, I'm talking about the essentials for pole vault training, uh, using gymnastics for that. So um, I just threw out a bunch of slides, a lot of exercises for you guys to think, oh, these would be great, great training tools for my athletes. Um, coaches, if you're seeing this, you know, write down some of the names. But the cool thing is, is that we are recording these sessions to be able to uh, pull them up later at your um, leisure to be able to pull some of the exercises out and, and utilize these in your training moving forward. Like I told the first session, you don't have to be an elite gymnast to be doing this. I was not an elite gymnast when I started pole vaulting. I didn't know anything about pole, or pole vaulting or gymnastics. And when my coach first saw me turn upside down, he knew that I needed some, some help in that area. And fortunate for me, his wife owns a gym two blocks from the university. So we were able to utilize a gym quite often for supplemental training for me. Um, don't be discouraged if you don't have access to a gymnastics gym. You can do a lot of this out on your own. It's kind of like being parkour. Parkour is really cool where you just go find a park and you get stuff done. Um, I told that first session that you can go to a park, find a high bar. Um, you can invest in a pair of rings um, on Rogue or Amazon. They're about $50. Um, and the rings and rope, both of them you can find on those sites. And I think those things are critical tools for being a pole vaulter. Um, we know that pole vaulting is kind of a, 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 an expensive event, but there's certain tools that help you understand how the mechanics work in, in it. So if you can get on rings, rope, high bar uh, throughout your training, I think you're going to understand and connect the dots a lot better. Um, so we'll jump right in. Um, so I think we already went over this, this pullover drill, um, but we'll just we'll hit it one more time. What this athlete is doing is that he's using a high bar. He's trying to get his chin up above that bar and trying to keep his hips and shoulders behind as long as he can to then be able to tap to the top without trying to touch his hips and roll over that bar. Um, one, it's a great strength move for our ladies and our, for our guys and just understanding how your body moves in space and time. Um, so the bar tent needs to be a little bit higher. So you jump towards it like Superman, you're jumping at an angle so you're leading with your head and your chest, trying to keep your hips and your legs behind you so you can use that tap, that energy that you created through that tap to swing to the top top of the bar and have that pullover. Um, the next drill um, are frog hangs. Um, so my gym has squat racks that have bars attached to them up there. You could be on a bar that he was just on. Um, but we're just using the squat rack to show you that you could be in your gym at school if you guys have a bar to be able to do this drill. So what I'm having him do is go a little bit straddle with his legs and really trying to get his hips above his shoulders. A lot of the kids get to that position um, of an L support position and then never understand or feel that sense of how the hips are should be above the shoulders. And a lot of those kids never get inverted on a pole. So the more times you can simulate those positions off the runway, I think the athlete is gonna be more apt and um, feel okay to be able to swing and try to get the hips above the shoulders. So this is just a simple drill to utilize in your gym, in your weight room um, to, to get in those positions. So that's called a frog, frog swing. And you can see that he's using a little bit of a body swing leading with the chest, trying to keep his hips and his legs behind, and then tap through the bottom and getting to hit his hips actively above his shoulders. The next one is a double, double leg eagles, and I call this one easier. So some kids don't have the, the lower ab strength early on in their development. So I'm holding a PVC out in front of Steven, and I'm just having him trying to pick up his legs we do it one way, we do it the other way. So he's holding, trying to get to that L support, but trying to get his legs up and over an object, okay? That's that's one drill, and that's that easier drill that most of my younger athletes have a hard time of picking their hips up. The lower abs aren't quite developed, um, and so that's a great place to start. The more advanced drill is to go a little bit higher, obviously. So he's going to have his legs come up a little bit higher. You can see his, his hips lifting a little bit. 
and all the while keep all the while keeping pressure on his hands and maneuvering around kind of like a lever on a clock okay just getting those hips up a little bit creating that lower ab strength and I do one side and then we do the other so again I try to equalize both sides especially when we're off the runway to just make sure we're not overcompensating and and overworking our dominant side Okay, we're going to go into ring drills next. Um, gymnastics can help with body awareness while, while in the air, obviously. Um, it promotes strength in the upper body, especially for the female athletes who typically lack the upper body strength. I talked about that early on when we started this presentation is that um, I was surprised how much more strength I um, gained through the upper body once we started implementing gymnastics training in my training regimen walking on my hands, doing handstands, doing upside down push-ups, um, all of these things, working on the rings, the rope. I was gaining strength through my shoulders on these days, so I didn't have to be in the weight room. So again, this is a great day to get off your legs, give your legs a rest. Some of our kids get shin splints really easy um, and just need a day to not hit the nervous system so hard and a really great time to just work that upper body and that, that body awareness while we're in the air. Um, and obviously it helps with development of the timing and rhythm of a swing once you are on a pole. So we'll get into the rings. Early on in the season, I just, I get the, I get the rings out. I get the rings out and we just do a lot of stability holds, working on that shoulder strength, um, trying to hold those rings tight to our body. You'd be really surprised that once my first kids get up on the rings, how shaky they are. Um, so over time, you get a little bit stronger, you're firing those little muscles to then activate. And again, it also helps with injury prevention. I think when we go into pole vault, you know, some, some kids want, want to get back to a, a fuller run sooner than later, and they haven't developed the strength to be able to hit a takeoff. Um, pole vaulters picked one of the most dynamic, most, um, ballistic events in track and field. If you're not in shape, um, to hit a takeoff, you can injure yourself really easily. So we don't only do it for strength, but we do it for injury prevention. So this drill here that Steven's doing, it seems really silly, but he's just holding a, a stability hold, a static hold, really trying to drive those rings to his to his um, his hips. And you know, when the kids get off, the rings are like, oh my gosh, my shoulders are just like fired up. That's good because we're teaching those little muscles to then help the bigger muscles hold that stability position. The next one, I call it an L support. This sometimes is really hard for the young athletes, again, because being in that L support, like they were on that eagle, that double leg eagle, and only at that point, you know, Steven's a post-collegiate athlete. He's been training for, you know, 15 years. He's been in these positions a little bit more than some of my younger athletes. Some of my younger athletes aren't able to pick up their legs as high as that position, but we keep working towards that. And this really... Um, fires up those low core muscles. Again, you want to have tight core muscles. You want to be able to work those core muscles. So when you swing upside down, all your core muscles are activating to help you get into that inverted position. You know, he's on his arms as well. He's um, holding that static hold, which is firing up the shoulders and firing up the lats to hold a tight position once you're in the air. So all these drills are really great buildup drills to a more advanced swinging drills. Um, this one is called a tuck up. So we'll just work on rolling our hips over our shoulders, swinging upside down. He's doing a little bit of a tap swing to get to that position. Sometimes we hang from a still position and just try to pick ourselves up to that position. But this is called a tuck up. And coaches, if you're out there, I really want you to try to get your athletes to get your hips above the shoulders. If they just come to parallel, they never know what it really feels like to get their hips above their shoulders and feel in that kind of vulnerable position of being upside down, keeping that grip strength on the pole or on the rings and knowing that it's okay to be there because some kids are like, I don't want to get there. And maybe that's a wake up call for some of the athletes saying, you know what, maybe pole vault's not for you. If you're not willing to get in this position, how do you think you can get upside down in a pole vault situation or a drill and execute what you want to execute. And um, I think the, the big thing is just um, 
just trying these drills and being more and more comfortable once you're doing these drills to be able to go on and execute this and then the, the next drills that are the, in the progression. This one is called skin the cat. This one really works on that lat strength. So Steven's gonna swing upside down. He's gonna extend through his shoulders. He's gonna swing upside down. He's gonna let his hips roll over his shoulders. He's gonna get in position upside down. He's not super comfortable with. He's gonna come back through. He's gonna hold his legs up, engage those low core muscles and then bring himself right back through. That's a tough one to do, but it's a really great strength um, exercise. Again, getting in this position where your hips are past your shoulders, feeling like you're going to fall off the backside, but trust that you're in a position that you have grip strength to get there, then come back through, try not to touch your feet to the ground, and then go back through again. Really great strength move for the guys and the girls. And surprisingly enough, um, I've noticed over the years that the guys show really good core muscles, like their abs are po poking through, but they're really weak in this drill. Even though their muscles show, girls tend to be a little bit stronger when you have to get your, your hips up, um, above your shoulders. Just for whatever reason, I probably need to do some research on this, wondering why that the women are a little bit stronger, but guys are a little less uh, strong through those low cores. So if you have a lot of guy vaulters that have a hard time getting upside down, this would be a great exercise for them to put into their training regimen. And I'm not saying you have to do it every day. We do gymnastics, you know, full day on Thursday, and then we supplement with some of the exercises on a, on a Tuesday. We don't do the whole series um, two days a week, but we throw some, I call it activation drills on Tuesday after we do slide block drills, running with and without the pole, and then we'll activate to get ready for that jump session on Wednesday. And we might add this into one of the guys' routines, if I know that they're lacking that upper or that core strength. Um, now we're getting more to that dynamic swing of swinging on the rings. And you can see here before I start the video that I tied a green bungee um, up above. Um, I tied it on with tape, it's secure. What I'm trying to get these athletes to do is hit a big tap swing and come through the takeoff and hit the top of the swing as aggressive as they can. A lot of kids want to slow down as they come to vertical, but me, um, for, my, for my training and what I'm trying to coach the kids is that I want hip speed to the top of the pole. If they're slowing down, they're going to miss the top end of the jump, um, and they're, they're being too calculated in their swing. They really need to let their hips go, and if, if, they, if they swing too fast through that just tells me once they're on a pole that we probably need more grip to slow the pole down so they can get in those positions. But if they're calculating their swing to get to the top of the pole, they're always going to be late. So here off the runway, we're really teaching to create that big backward swing. And as they're coming through the bottom of the swing, I would say that when they're straight up and down, that's, you know, 12 o'clock and six o'clock is the bottom where their feet are going to tap through. Once they hit the bottom at six o'clock, they better be swinging as, as dynamic as they can, letting those hips go, being as fast as they can. So watch Steven kind of come to the top. He won't slow down. He's gonna to try to come in there and hit really aggressively. So he's gonna create a swing. He goes right to the top. He's gonna to come down. He's gonna go in a nice backwards swing. He's gonna come up again. You can see that green bungee give a little bit, but he's coming to the top. And again, Steven's not, a level 10 gymnast, he pikes a little bit. Coaches, you can see that if you have an eye for this. Um, I'm trying to have him not pike a, at the top. I'm trying to have him sh as straight as he can to come in as a straight lever as possible. But for whatever reason, he's still a little bit shy to come in there and, and really hit and execute that takeoff as, as well as he can. And guess what? When he swings on a pole, he's a little bit apprehensive to really come to the top and start working that quarter turn. And that's, that's that component in his jump right now that we're really trying to work on. So even at that merging elite level, there's things to work on. And this is one of those components that, that he's still working on. So we have swing to invert on the rings without the green bungee. And you can see that he's coming in a little bit more controlled, right? He's still trying to create that tap swing, trying to keep his hips straight, but he's piking just a little bit. You can see that and slowing down. 
And that's why I was able to rig up my higher rings and be creative and try to put that, that green bungee. You can find it at Dick's Sporting Goods. They use it a lot for, for assisted pull-ups and, and different exercises, um, um, tracking or extracting your hip um, and all those things. So those, those, those bands are really thick. So you can tie one up to your rings if you have one and the kids can freely hit a nice tap swing to the top. Okay. The next one is just pull-ups. We work on strengthening our shoulders on our off days. The guys and the girls will be doing pull-ups on rings or the high bar. We are, you know, whatever rep it is during that time of the season, you know, sometimes it's reps, you know, um, two sets of 10 or two sets of eight, or we break it down to two sets of five towards the end of the season as we're trying to get faster and more dynamic for, for the competitions. We try to align our workouts the same way. We don't stay in the weight room doing reps of 10. When it's getting closer to districts, we start to back off and taper off and be more explosive and dynamic. So our, our weight room, our gymnastics training um, goes in the flow of what we're trying to accomplish on the runway. The next one is just tricep dips. You don't have to have them really high. Obviously we have them pretty low here for Steven, just showing that they're pretty unstable, but again, you're trying to fire up all those little muscles that don't get worked all the time. Again, it's an injury prevention drill. It's a good strength drill. Um, and you're just getting stronger and you're getting um, more stable so you can hit a better table and come into the summit, come into the summit. This one is called a lever, um, a front lever. So he's gonna try to get upside down and then try to come down on the front side as straight as he can. So I'm, engaged, I'm telling him to engage his glutes, squeeze really tight through his lats, and you can see that he can hold it for a you know, few degrees, but he can't quite get it to parallel, and that's really hard to do. Um, you'll see like level 10, level 8, 9, 10 gymnasts be able to do that, but as a pole vaulter, we're not gymnasts. If he can get to that level, that's he's doing pretty good. So that's the front. I think I also have a slide in here showing the back lever. So he's He's going to do the same thing. When you go to the back lever, you want to turn the rings, um, palms facing the direction you're going. You can see that his palms are faced that way. The back lever is a little bit harder than the front lever, but again, I'm cueing him to, to engage his glutes and his shoulders, his lats, and it's just an uncomfortable position. But again, working on all those little muscles that help us keep that stability at our takeoff position. Oh, this, I think this one, I call this the coaches or the coach ring challenge. Um, people ask me all the time, hey, Stacy, do you still pole vault? And I'd like to say, yes, I do. But um, I've had a knee injury. I've had a couple injuries. And sometimes, you know, doing the full vault really flares up injuries. So um, I don't get to play as much as I would like to. But I still like to do some of the elements with the kids. And gymnastics doesn't hurt my body so bad. So I like to get in on the fun. And one thing that was kind of my bread and butter was my swing. I ran really fast. My plant wasn't awesome. That was something I'd always wanted to work on. And I always worked on during my career working with my coaches. But what, what saved me and what won medals for me is that I could swing um, very quickly to the top. And I think, you know, not having the gymnastics background as a young kid and then finding it as I found the pole vault, it was something fun and exciting. And it always made my training, it didn't seem monotonous. Um, you know, pole vaulters, as we know, there's a lot of, a lot of elements to train. We train the run, we train in the plant, um, we train in gymnastics. If we have that capability, we're in the weight room, we're throwing med balls. We're, you know, I used to long jump a lot still when I was competitive, I used to still run the hurdles. So for me to, um, to be able to swing was kind of my bread and butter. So this is me, I think last year, age 49, still tapping a nice swing. So again, we're trying to create that backward C like we talked about early on in my presentation and then come hard to the top, be really aggressive. I, I'm adding a quarter turn to it like I would quarter turn on the pole. I'm turning like a right-handed person. I am a left-handed, so if anybody knows me, I'm a left-handed pole vaulter, but I do a lot of drills right-handed just because, you know, um, pretty much everybody that I coach in my gym is right-handed. 
Um, I do have a couple of kids that come in and are left-handed, but the masses are my right-handed kids. So I, I coach a lot of things from the right, right side. Luckily, I'm a little bit ambidextrous, so it, it doesn't feel super foreign to me. But I love playing. And I think when the kids see their coach out there trying to do some of the drills, they appreciate the event a little bit more. I remember my coach being able to train with me uh, for most of my career. And I figured if my coach could do it, then I could do it, right? And then I would challenge him to different drills along the way. And, uh, you know, he would jump with me sometimes. And that, that made training fun. I know not all our coaches you know, came from backgrounds of being a pole vaulter. They've, they've read and they've watched seminars like this to be coaches. And I commend them because I think it's really hard to read a textbook and understand this event if you've never been in those positions. Um, I'm not saying I'm the best coach out there, but I think that I've had a lot of experiences uh, to draw from. And if I have a question that I don't know how to answer, I have resources to be able to call upon. And I think um, I consider myself a collaborative coach when when um, I get kids that will come in from all over the country to train sometimes. And there's a couple kids that are in Montana that their coach isn't super knowledgeable about that higher level of training. And so he's asked me about some different elements. And so to be able to show him videos, um, I've, traded, I've tried to create a lot of database of a lot of the things that we do in training to then share with ath athletes and coaches out there. So collaborative training is kind of my you know, my, my thing. And, and I think that um, I want to keep learning. I want to hear it differently because the way I learned it, you know, worked for me, but I know that the way I cue things doesn't always work for the masses. And so I encourage other coaches to come to my, to my camps and my clinics or to reach out to me and say, Hey, this is the way I coach. How would you address this to your athlete? And, you know, we'll, we'll talk on the phone or we'll email back and forth. And I think that's how kids, that's how athletes learn. And I think once I stop learning that I think I should back away from the event. So I've, I've really enjoyed my journey so far of being a coach, being a mentor, being an ambassador for the sport, because I'm still learning and, um, and I want to do this for a long time and I want to help that next generation improve. So, um, so it's fun to play. It's, it's fun to remember the cues that were given to me and then try to address that to, to the kids that are working with me at, in the moment. Um, rope drills. Some of the movements used in gymnastics um, have the same feeling that you would have on a pole. So get out and get a get a rope, get a, get some rings because these movements really help you to connect those dots, right? Um, I also put in here the run up is the most important element to train, but if you can add gymnastics training to your preparation, I think you're likely to connect the dots even better. Like I said, you don't have to have a formal gym to be able to do this stuff. You can go out to your local park, find a high bar, you know, maybe invest in the rope and a ring so you can get into those inverted positions. But I think the more times you get in those positions, you're going to one, feel more comfortable. You're going to train your body to be a little bit stronger and it's just going to help you in the end. So gymnastics will, will help connect um, better with the pole, like I said here. And the speed of the swing should match the run-up. So like I said, when Steven was hitting some of these swings on the rings and the rope, um, you want to be able to create that stretch, that elasticity, and then fire to the top. And so when I see a lot of my younger athletes try to swing um, after the run-up, the run looks great. You're running really aggressive into the takeoff, and then there's this takeoff, and then there's this lull. And you'll see kids pick up their legs and kind of just sit there in this pike position, and ride the pole out and you're not being very dynamic on the pole. So this is where the rings, the rope, the high bar could be super beneficial to your training and to that next connective piece. Okay, so um, this, this first one is just called stand to invert. So we're just gonna stand, stand straight in line with the pole or with the with the rope and just try to swing upside down again trying to get the hips above the shoulders dropping the shoulders feeling comfortable in these positions i've also added a little bit of an extension off the top and that would be for that more advanced kid that's learning how to extend off the top of the pole once the pole is bent and it's uncoiling you want to understand that you keep pressure on your hands you keep moving your hands through that takeoff until the push off and the bar clearance you never stop moving your hands on a pole until you have cleared the bar and there's a push off. So that's stand to invert. 
Um, this one is called a, a two-step to invert. So I have my kids have the, uh-oh, I jumped out of my, it jumped out. Um, oh, I, I think that you downloaded the wrong one because. Yeah, you may not have that one. Um, I think if I go to it, it's going to jump me out of it. Yep. Okay, does that mean I'm done? Well, no, just that video, that YouTube is not available. Oh, okay, okay. So I can talk about it really quick. So the rope is hanging. I have the kids walk back two big steps. They're gonna run into it with two steps and jump up onto the rope as high as they can, right? So it's kind of like that chin up pullover. You want to jump up, but while moving through that takeoff, trying to keep your hips behind the rope just a little bit and then tap to the top. So that one's a little bit more dangerous, correct? So we're jumping up a little bit higher. We're exposing our head and shoulders to the ground. We better have some something of safety underneath us. So you can see in the video here that I'm showing now of Jeremy climbing upside down, we have a big uh, eight inch mat underneath. So, you know, just in case someone loses a grip, when we got our head and our shoulders exposed to the ground, you better have some kind of safety mechanism, you know, underneath you. Always think about safety. Um, even, you know, we can talk about the pit later. Always make sure your pit is set up safe because you want to be able to come back the next day and train. You don't want to fall by missing a grip and falling to the ground where there's concrete exposed or hard surface and hurt yourself pretty badly that you can't come back the next day. Um, this one is called a two-hand climb to invert. This one's kind of hard for a lot of the athletes because they're not comfortable, again, getting their, their hips above their shoulders, but he's compressing his, his hips a little bit. He's in kind of that froggy hang that Steven did on the high bar. He's letting his um, knees bend a little bit to compress. He's gonna go from that compressive position to an extension, like he's gonna shoot his legs straight, and then he's gonna grab above his handhold. And then he's gonna compress again and he's gonna grab. So he's gonna climb the rope upside down by compressing his legs and kind of extending up. So you can see that he's popping his hips and as he pops his hips, he re-grabs above the other hand hold. That's kind of a, an advanced move. So if you have athletes that you know are strong enough to hold on to a rope and get in that position and really get um, um, balanced over their shoulders with their, with their hips above their shoulders, they should be able to climb that rope pretty, pretty, pretty easily. For that younger athlete that doesn't have that core strength or that fear of being upside down, it's going to be a little bit more of a struggle. So sometimes I come in and I try to um, guide by holding their small of their back and just kind of keeping them upside down as, as they try to climb. And they might get one grip, you know, and then they'll the next time, you know, they might be able to get the two grips. So it's just something that you got to work on. Again, you're going to come into gymnastics being able to do maybe half of these drills you know, right now, and then just keep working towards executing all of them. So again, it's it's a fun, fun um, elements to train for for your training for pole vault. I think we already did that one. Okay, okay. So this one is a little bit more of a a strength move. Jeremy is going to be seated on the ground, and it's just seated to an invert. So trying to get your mass off the ground and get your hips rolled over your shoulder. Um, we put the mat there just in case somebody let go. Um, this one's not super dangerous because you're not going too far. You know, you're not re-gripping or anything, but just trying to shift your weight from sitting on the ground to then getting those hips above the shoulders is, is a pretty, pretty good strength maneuver drill. And again, those young athletes have a little bit harder time doing this but a little bit more developed athlete that has upper body strength, lat strength, should be able to do this fairly easy. Okay, I know that I only have probably about 10 minutes left. I'm, um, I'm not sure where I'm at, but I would love to open up this time to Q&A. Um, I think a lot of you, I sent out my email earlier um, to, to look at video if we can. Um, I don't know if anybody has sent anything to my email, but- um, questions on chat. And I can moderator. open up chat as well. Your moderator can handle that, right? Oh, yeah. I think my moderator can open that. That would be awesome. Oh, I think my last slide just came up. Um, to reach out to me, you know, here's my information. Um, I have camps and clinics throughout the year. Um, we're pushing for the two outdoor summer camps right now. I have one in June, one in July. 
I get kids that come from all over the United States. I've had kids come from New Mexico uh, or Mexico. I've had kids come from Australia. I've had um, a girl come from the Canary Islands, which is way, way across the Atlantic. Um, and I'm still friends with her to this day. Um, so we'll touch on a lot of this stuff at my camp. Um, it will be held here at my facility where I have all the implements and stuff. So it's great to be able to be in-house at my facility where I know all my equipment is and what we have accessibility to. Um, my, my, this is kind of my camp card that we try to hand out to kids at, at um, the meets. And it kind of just goes through the different things that we touch on. We'll talk about classroom sessions and in-depth, you know, analyzing your jump, you know, from, from um, dietary needs to, you know, mindset, goal setting, all those types of things. And if there's an area that we haven't focused on and you're interested in, text that to me because I love more information because it just helps me grow, as I said, like an, um, a coach as well. I want to know what you guys need to know about. Sometimes I think, oh, I'm touching on everything, but there might be a topic out there that I haven't talked about yet, and I'll do my very best to cover it and give you some great knowledge. Um, Brad, do you have a question for me? Or we? No, I was going to say we've got about three or four minutes left, and, and Kevin may have a couple of questions that we had on the, on the chat room that he may be able to read for you. You know, okay, I, great. I, I did get, get a couple of questions, but according to my schedule, we're supposed to wait and do those at 122. So yeah, because I think be, yeah, I think I'm supposed to join Ian, and we're supposed to have a, a Q and A yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna be, those. Yeah, we'll jump back into the main session for just a couple of minutes, and then yeah. there'll be a third session on there'll be question and answers. Okay. Bob, I want to see your face. Um, there's Bob Hartley in here from Montana, and he's been uh, one of my satellite athletes. He's been training on his own during COVID. I know he's taking a gap year this year. He has a pole vault pit set up in his backyard. He has rope and ring and I've been able to give him some things to work on unfortunately he hurt himself just recently so he's on a uh, road to recovery but I appreciate you getting on Bob and, and listening and hopefully I give you some ideas to keep training so this is a great opportunity for me to talk to somebody that's injured right now um, I know that Bob's hurt a lower limb I, I can't remember if it was a sprained ankle you tell me can get off turn your speaker on so I can hear you I think he sprained his ankle um, so there's a lot of things that you can do through gymnastics, all the bar stuff, all the rings, the rope. If you're not jumping down on the ground, there's a lot of things that you can do to get upside down. And I know that Bob has put um, a bar up out at his facility because I've seen it in his videos that he sent me. So you know, there's no sitting around for Bob at this time. Even though he's hurt himself, um, there's still a lot of things that he can do. So um, thanks for, for coming on today, Bob. Oh, so is there a video of stick jumping? Okay, I'm going to go to one more screen. I think I have a little bit of time. So they did talk about, about my stick jumping campaign. Um, Steve Thomas, who's here doing my admin. That's your, um, or that's your corporate speaking. Oh, here we go. Um, so we were at camp one year, and we were talking about how do we get more kids involved in our great event. I find that kids don't find pole vaulting until maybe their sophomore, junior year. And we all know that pole vaulting is really hard. So we thought if we could buy some bamboo, which is very inexpensive, we can tape it to look like a pole vault pole. We can get in and be in classrooms of the elementary kids and the middle school kids and show them some of the easy drills that we do as pole vaulters, as beginners. Maybe we could get them hooked on pole vaulting. And we've been able to go across the country. We've been in how many schools, Steve? 120 plus schools. 120 plus schools. 42,000 kids. 42,000 kids have had a stick in their hand. And we set up different demonstrations out on a grass field. We've been into a gymnastics room when, or a, um, a gym when we know that the weather hasn't been great. We have curriculum based around our stick jumping program. And I'm excited to see this next generation come alive because now that they've had a, a pole in their hand, and they feel in that they have felt that energy of what, what, what it feels like to leave the ground and move this pole through a vertical plane, we might have pole vault mania on our hands. Um, and the big thing for me is once I went into schools, I thought, oh, we're going to find the next Olympic hopeful. What, what, what struck me um, was that there were so many kids not participating in PE classes. There were a lot of kids that were sitting on the sidelines saying, I don't want to do X, Y, Z. And I was horrified by it because I went to school to be a PE teacher and an educator. And I never really got to that formal setting because my career took off. And then, you know, I decided to 
do my own thing. But I've been able to go into these classrooms now and to see that there's kids not participating in PE really scared me because one, I understand that that moving and getting your heart rate up is very important to stay healthy for the rest of your life. And I'm not saying all these kids need to be pole vaulters, but our big message when we go out is to try something new. I don't want them to be afraid of it. I want them to go out and embrace it. And if we can get them on a pole and do something fun and try something that they've never done before and get over that fear, maybe they'll go out and do X, Y, Z. And so it's, yes, we'll find pole vaulters. Um, hopefully we'll find that next Olympic champion. But the big thing is, is just get these kids out moving, doing something different. I think a lot of teachers are excited about it too, because all we've done for the last 20 years is basketball and football and, you know, um, badminton. This is something completely different that gets your heart rate up, that uses your upper body, that uses your mind, um, that has physics components to it. And the kids have a big hoop doing it. And I, I have a kids class that I run at my facility and I'll teach the kids all kinds of disciplines. And I'll ask them at the end of the day, what do you guys want to do next time we come? And they always say, we want to do stick jumping. So I know it's something special. It's been fun to be going across the country and to implement this in, in a lot of cities in England. and in England. Um, we've been over there when world championships were there. I was able to go over because I was being inducted to the hall of fame. So I utilized that opportunity to ask if we can go into schools. And so we have some really great connections over there. Mondo in Sweden. Um, and Mondo Duplantis in Sweden, he's excited for us to come to Sweden. So the doors are gonna open, but if you know an educator out there that wants to try something new, let me know and we'll reach out. We've reached out to so many teachers and educators are really looking for something different. So that's what I got for you. <laughs> hey, I think we're in about five seconds. We're going to be heading back to the main room and then we'll come back with the questions and, and answers. Awesome. Thank you. Done. Hello, everybody.